in its life, we see two extremes in terms of reproductive strategies when it comes to talking about uh, readiness or timing for reproduction. And one extreme is when the organism has one event, just one time, that he will have this reproductive encounter. So he spends his whole life working out to that one moment when he's actually going to reproduce. This is called semoparity. Now, so semoparity is, for example, when the salmon is going up the, up the, the stream, up the river, and at the end of its life, it has one chance of actually reproducing and laying out the eggs and doing what it needs to do. A lot of plants are also like that. They, they're what we call annual plants, plants that grow and have one event where at one time they're actually going to have seeds and spread over the environment, and after that they're dead. There's some trees even that grow and they spend a long, long life growing, and then at the very t end of its life is one event where they plant all the seeds they, they can, and that's it. That's all they got. And actually you will see the opposite of that sometimes also in nature, which is going to be called... Um, Iteroparity. So iteroparity is the opposite. Is when instead of having one in, once and all out event where you just try your best to um, to have as many babies as possible and hope that a few of them will survive and will make it, iteroparity is the opposite. Iteroparity is it's it ro parity. It's when the um, organism has a careful reproductive event. He has only a few throughout its life, but he makes sure that each of these events are careful and incre increase their chances of each one of them to survive. So, for example, look at uh, large mammals like, you know, um, you have bears, you have pigs, you have elephants, uh, primates. All of these actually will have just a few reproductive encounters throughout life. They might have several, but usually each reproductive encounter, they will have a small litter or a number of or organisms that is going to be not too big so that they can actually take care of them. And a lot of plants are like that too. They'll make less seeds, but they'll make the seeds highly specialized so that it would increase the chances of that seed actually making it when it comes time to it. So here, see, for example, this is what this picture over here is showing you, that a semoparous plant, which will actually only have one reproductive encounter, will throw out 250 seeds all at once and just once, and then that's done. Now, meanwhile, another plant that might actually survive to have to see another reproductive encounter that has a chance to make it to the next season, so he, she's, she's not going to be a once and all out kind of reproduction. She knows that she might have another chance. Well, she doesn't know, but evolutionarily, she, she's been coded in your genes to, to expect a yet another year to have another chance. But maybe by knowing that the chances of survival decrease as she goes older and older, what is going to happen is that at first she's going to have a lot of seeds, maybe a hundred. The next year she's going to make a little less and a little less and a little less and a little less. But as the time goes by, she will continue to make seeds because chances are she will still probably survive. So, but if the plant will have only a 30% chance of, of dying every year and it's going to have another chance of having children then you will see even less seeds made all at once and you're going to see so that that it's going to be a bigger distribution to later years because she wants to give a higher chance of survival uh, since she knows she there she knows that she's under less pressure and more likely to survive so you know as you see then as the chances of mortality go down in other words as you have a better chance of surviving the season right that means that it's going to have a greater chance of having the future reproductive encounters be equally successful as the one that you're currently having. Well, of course, there's always a chance you're going to die, so you are going to invest on right now always more than in the future. But you're not going to be once and all out and put all your energy in one event if you know there's a good chance that you're going to have another event. And so as mortality uh, rates actually go down, the organism becomes more iteroparous than semoparous. If the organism knows that it's going to have a more more chance, evolution makes it more adaptive to actually wait and don't spend all of your energy in one reproductive event, but have a better chance to try to do this again. And you will see this pattern of an iteroparous plant, for example, where it will have less seeds at first and spread out their seeds throughout their lives and in those events where they're going to be more. But as you see in the picture that I was talking about, it's actually not one or the other in nature. It's more like a range where you will have some which will actually do the the uh, completely semoparous uh, event, which will have one and for all, 
and you have some which will be in between, and then some which will be more completely uh, iterative and take care of each event, uh, put equal energy in each of the, the events. So, but both those strategies have to do with, with the environment, because if you're in an environment or if you live with the kind of life that you have a low survival, either be, be more probably because you have an unpredictable environment. So you have that survivorship curve where, you know, lots of people die on their younger in their lives, and very few live very, very old. It is going to be more advantageous for your good beasts to be semi-parous. But if you live in a high survival environment where the survival is stable and it's better for you to take care of your young to make sure that they survive, and you're probably going to have another chance to do so anyways, then you're not going to spend all your energy in that one reproductive event, but you're going to pace yourself and spread a reproductive event throughout your life, and you're going to be more eye to your Paris. So the, the survivability curve that we talked about in a previous, previously will help determine what kind of uh, strategy the animal actually uses. Remember that in the beginning of this video, I talked about the fact that the average number of females and the number of females which are actually reproductive helps determine the reproductive rate of the species. So look at this graph here with the birds uh, and how it ch the ratio of males to females tends to change uh, depending on the chances of the animal surviving for the following winter. So if a lot of the parents are surviving for the following winter, you're not going to see a big difference between males and females because most people are surviving. And in that case, you have a smaller number of children. Why? Because you know there's a great chance that these children will that you have another chance of, of reproducing. So you're not going to have to spend too much energy having too many children and taking care of all those children. So instead, of, instead of you reduce the number of offspring in those kind of circumstances. So when there's a lot of males and females in the population, the numbers of males and females will be very similar and you're going to be, have reduced number of children. Now, if you have a smaller chance of surviving the next, the next, the next, maybe say only 60% 60, 60 chance, then the number of children will be normal. We have la, la, a little more children than, than before because now you know your chance of surviving the next winter is lower. And if the chance of surviving the next winter is even lower, then your best chance of surviving is making a very large number of children all at once and to have a greater number of females surviving so the males will take the hit, you know, they'll eat less and they'll also take, they'll go be the ones that, you know, eat, have the last food and take the most dangerous situations so that the offspring can actually survive. They'll take care of all those children and make sure that more females survive for, so that the next winter uh, they still can do the same even if there's only a few numbers of males in the population being born. Uh, or staying behind because remember what matters is that number of reproductive females. So you see that even in animals, not just plants, you see that pattern where as the mortality rate increases, you're also going to increase the number of children you have per reproductive event and you're going to increase focus on more females surviving so that uh, you can increase the reproductive rate since the females are what matters, only a few males can make it. So again, reproductive strategies and even the actual composition of the population has everything to do with the environment that you have around you. So another example of that is pioneer species doing succession, for example. Because remember, doing succession events, uh, the pioneer species will come through and will have to be the ones that conquer that inhospital environment that just where life is just starting. So since it's an inhospital environment, it's unpredictable, doesn't have a lot of resources, they're going to be very, very uh, at your Paris where we're going to have a lot of children, one and for all. So that's why the annual plants or plants that have high reproductive rates will be the very first ones to come through because the environment is so dangerous. So to summarize, so to summarize the things that we talked about in this life history videos, the idea is that an animal or an organism or a plant, whatever it is, reproductive rate or reproductive strategy evolves under certain conditions. So that if, for example, that organism is under a lot of pressure from the environment and they can't be certain that future reproductive events will be possible, then everything about the organism will maximize the production of a lot of offspring in one event to maximize the chances that at least one life, even if you can't take care of all of those offspring. So you, you spend less energy, less effort per offspring, but you make a lot more offspring. So that means you probably will develop faster if you can. You probably will have behaviors which will be leading to faster reproduction. Uh, your genes will have we, we've masked for that. Your hormones, everything will be geared towards a reproductive strategy where you're going to be exploding once 
with reproduction. Meanwhile, if you have a reproductive, if you evolved or you came from ancestors which had more chances of reproducing, where their environments were more stable, then it's more advantageous to have less offspring but focus on the survival of each particular offspring. So to have a reduced brood size, to have less offspring, but to make sure that you can care for each of that offspring. But that's a strategy that works better if you're under less pressure from the environment, if there's more certainty of survival. So the survivorship curve is going to help determine the re reproductive strategy of the, of the organism. And so that's why if you see the population suddenly become less certain of its future survivability, then you're going to see pressure or shifts towards a more semi preparedness strategy of having an enlarged brood size and having a more uh, a more female male population than males since the reproductive rates are tied in to the average number of females and the proportion of those females which are actually reproducing. Meanwhile, if there's a shift towards stability and to future um, encounters to be possible, then you're going to see the population evolving more towards an itioparous uh, setup where you're going to invest as much as you can right now, but without investing too much because you know that you also have to spend some energy in the future and you can spend more time caring for each one of your offspring. So the survival rate and the likelihood of, rep uh, of additional reproductive events, or in other words, the stability of the environment will help determine what kind of strategy do you have? So, remember this has to do with the current population that's evolving to one end or the other, or with the ancestors, because a lot of times we are where we came from. So it's not necessarily because it's better for us right now, It's sometimes it's because it's what our ancestors have done, and so we continue to do it. But uh, remember, this is shifting. So that's why life is not really one or the other, but a lot of organisms are in between, and you will see this balance between um, you know, focusing on protecting the offspring versus focusing on having more offspring, depending on what is your chances of surviving for future encounters. So this is interesting, the life history of the animal, the way it develops, how fast it develops, the behavior that it does, what genes it has and what genes activate in response to what kind of environmental pressures, hormonal control, uh, pheromonal control, even the way some animals think, like humans for example, all of it can be tied in to the kind of evolutionary pressure that the current population or that the ancestral population was under in order to make that population be more likely, to, if their, the population was more likely to survive, you're going to be more likely to actually have more investment on each offspring and have less of them. If the population was less likely to survive for future, future uh, reproductive encounters, you're going to be more likely to have explosive once and for all kind of uh, reproductive events. So there you have it. That's why the salmon does once and for all, because what are the chances of them surviving two trips up the river like that? That is why some, tree, some, some trees will do like that, because they can't be sure they will have another chance of surviving like that, like annual plants. They're pioneer species. Sometimes then they will know that as, as the ecosystem goes through succession, they probably won't have another chance of making children because other plants will take their place, and so they maximize the reproductive events. But if you know, you're going to be, probably have a better chance of having a child in the future like a, a, a tiger or a primate or an elephant or some plants which invest in those awesome, more specialized fruits and they stay stable over many, many years, then they're going to be perennial. They're going to be having reproductive events every season or so and spend less seeds and more care per seed because they know that they have a chance of surviving. And this has to do with the environment in which they or their ancestor evolve. And I hope this is clear. And in the next video, we're going to talk about a, diff a similar way to compare a life history in terms of reproductive strategies with a little bit more focus on the growth of the population. I'll see you guys then.